Hello everyone, my name is Vinny Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about grand utility possibility frontier and welfare maximization. What do you mean by grand utility possibility frontier? In short, you can say GUPF. GUPF shows a maximum possible utility combination for individual at given optimal condition for production, allocation and distribution of resources. GUPF shows a maximum possible utility combination for individual at a given optimal condition for production, allocation and distribution of resources. Every point of GUPF shows a Pareto efficiency because here resources are fully utilized. Assumption GUPF is based on fixed factor endowment given technology and individual preferences. We mainly apply GUPF in welfare economics in order to find out socially optimal distribution of goods because it identifies single best point of resources allocation from so many Pareto efficient possibilities. Now we will see how to drive a grand utility possibility frontier. First of all you need to understand this diagram. If you remember this type of diagram we have already discussed in Pareto optimality. On x axis we have consumer goods, y axis we have capital goods. AB is production possibility curve which shows in economy we can produce OA capital goods and OB consumer goods and all point of production possibility curve shows Pareto optimal and here we have two individual A and B indifference curve these are indifference curve of individual A and B indifference curve of individual A start from A1 if individual A move from A1 to A2 his utility will increase obviously higher indifference curve give us higher uh, utility. Similar if A will move from A2 to A3 his utility will increase more and indifference curve of B start from here from B1. If B will move from B1 to B2 his utility will increase. If B will move from B2 to B3 his utility will increase more. Please keep in your mind indifference curve of A start from A1 and indifference curve of B will start from B1. This is Pareto optimality condition margin rate of substitution of A equal to margin rate of substitution of B equal to margin rate of transformation. This is Pareto optimality condition. Now we will see this diagram satisfy this condition or not. Suppose our production point is Q2. Here we draw one tangent DD in order to show slope of production possibility curve. As we know slope of production possibility curve is equal to MRT margin rate of transformation. Here we also draw one tangent KK in order to see uh, slope of indifference curve. As we know slope of indifference curve is equal to MRS. So this KK tangent shows MRS of A and MRS of B. Here you can see this KK tangent is parallel to DD tangent. If KK tangent is parallel to DD tangent that means both slope are equal to each other or you can say that MRS of A is equal to MRS of B equal to MRT. So this diagram in this Q, Q2 point satisfy your Pareto optimality condition. Now we will see how to draw grand uh, utility possibility frontier from this uh, diagram. On x axis we have A utility, utility of A. On y axis we have utility of uh, B. From this uh, diagram we will draw a grand uh, utility possibility frontier. That means uh, we will take E, E1, E2 same point here E, E1, E2. All these point shows Pareto optimality. We have already proved this diagram fulfill condition of Pareto optimality. That's why this all point A, E, E1, E2 shows Pareto optimality. Same point we will bring here. That means this same E point we will bring here. At E point you can see A has a lower indifference curve but B has a higher indifference curve or you can say, uh, say that at this E point uh, A has very less uh, utility but B have uh, a very high utility. Same we will show here at this E point you can see B have more utility but A has very less uh, utility. Similar this same E2 point we will bring here 
at this e point e2 point you can see a has a higher indifference curve but b have very lower indifference curve that's why at this e2 point a has higher utility but b have very less utility same we will show here you can see b have very less utility but a has so much utility at, at this e2 point means same e e1 e2 point we will bring here e e1 and e2 and join all this point when we join all this point it will be called grand utility possibility frontier if all these point shows parity optimality then obviously all these point will also show parity optimality or you can say that all point on our all point on our grand utility possibility frontier shows parity optimality now we will say maximum welfare with the help of grand utility possibility frontier on x axis we have utility of a y axis we have utility of b this ab is a grand uh, utility possibility frontier w1 w2 w3 and w4 are social indifference curve social indifference curve shows a welfare of society higher social indifference curve means welfare of society is increasing lower social indifference curve means welfare of society is decreasing at this e star point you can see grand uh, utility possible possibility frontier is tangent to social indifference curve that's why e star will be called maximum uh, social welfare point or you can say that e star will be called uh, point of uh, constraint uh, bliss here you can see parity optimality have so many point e e1 e2 but grand uh, possibility utility frontier uh, choose one single point which represent uh, maximum social welfare means this point uh, not only satisfy parity optimality but also help to achieve uh, maximum welfare of society so this is our best single point society will not prefer r over s because r lies on uh, lower uh, social indifference curve and lower social indifference curve means less welfare of society similar society will not prefer s over e s lies on lower social indifference curve and lower social indifference curve give us uh, less benefit so e is our e star is our single best point where welfare of society is maximum so this is all about today's video i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care